Okay, let me go back. She said, how do in, uh, how the, the interviewer says, how do Indians see blacks or what stereotype do we Indians have of them? Have them. The answer, look at the Indian obsession with fair skin. It is one of the most sickening things about us. If you watch Bollywood movies, you'd imagine India was a country of white folks. Indian racism towards black people is almost worse than white people's racism. It's unbelievable. I've seen it happen on the streets when I've been with black friends. Oh, God. And sometimes it comes from people whose skin color is really no different. Rarely have I been so enraged and ashamed. That racism has manifested in outright attacks. I've seen it. In 2014, soon after Adam Adam, Adam Party won a massive mandate in Delhi elections, the law minister Samnath Samnath Bharti led a group of people on a midnight raid. A group of Congolese and Ugandan women, Ugandan women, were physically attacked and humiliated in Kirky for being involved with immoral and illegal activities. In 2017, African students were attacked and beaten by a vigilante mob in Greater Nodia, charged with selling drugs. But racism in India is vast and varied. Who can forget? The BJP member of parliament, Turan Vijay's defense of racism after Nodia Noida attack. If we were racist, why would the entire South, you know, the Tremils, you know, the Kerala, you know, the Kirkanata and the Andri, why do we live with them? And why do they live with us? He should tell us black South Indian folks, I'd like to know his reason. Okay, now, because because the person is saying, so I'm I'm assuming all of these uh, are tribes that are uh, you know black, so and, and they live just like us amongst the whiter Indians. This is so sick. See, this is what the white man has done all over the world. He's made white seem so noble and black seem so uh, just. Dastardly, when in when reality it's really the other way around. When you go and get your antioxidants and your greens and all of that, that's dark shit because it's good for you. And you break your neck getting uh, dark vegetables and fruits in your body, don't won't you? Come on, somebody, won't you? Hmm. Question. When African Americans argue black lives matter, Asian lives matter, and whites argue all lives matter. Uh, the answer. That is a sly way of draining the politics out of what is being said by resorting to meaningless truisms. Asian and whites are not being murdered, incarcerated, disenfranchised, and impoverished in the U.S. the same way African Americans are. Ever since slavery in the U.S. ended, there has been a concentrated effort to violently hobble, hold down, and enslave African Americans in other ways that appear to be fit that that appear to fit into the social contract and the legal framework of fucking democracy. The international story of American imperialism and war. The genocide in Vietnam, Japan, Iraq, Afghanistan is a separate story. I don't think that it is what uh, hashtag, had the hashtag all Asian lives matter and all lives matter are referring to. Hmm. Question. When Dallas say... Um, uh, Dalit Lives Matter, does it not appropriate to un undermine the struggle of black people over centuries? 
Is the Dalit Lives Matter movement above racism? Casteism, like classism, and racism, though they have different histories, are not different except that casteism claims some kind of divine mandate. So, I think to say that Dalit Lives Matter appropriate the struggle of black lives, black people over the centuries is a bit harsh. I think it is an attempt to make common cause and seek solidarity and some of the light from Black Lives Matter, a movement that by the very fact that it is taking place in the U.S. is more powerful, more visible than any other. In India, casteism is flown under the radar of international security scrutiny for only for so long. A project of unseen helped along by even the best known, most respected intellectuals and academics. Having said that, nobody is above racism. It takes different forms in different places. In South Africa, for example, there is xenophobia from black South Africans towards Nigerians and Africans from other African countries. Okay, as we know, caste oppression, Brahmanism, which is what um, uh, 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 Kamala Harris is, is practiced by everyday caste that oppresses the caste below it. And that goes all the way down the ladder, even within the political category of Dalit, as you yourself have experienced in your own struggles. Stare at anything long enough and it will always turn out to be more complicated than the rhetoric around it. But rhetoric is important. It provides a framework for people. Think about it. It's important because it, it, it provides a framework. And it does. Uh, okay. It... it it, it, it provides a framework for people to organize their thoughts. Why are blacks still stereotyped as drug peddlers, savages, cannibals in the Indian psychic and thereby in the Indian news and entertainment media? Because we are a racist culture. Last year, I saw a Malayam film called Abramende Sainthin the sons of Abraham is what it means. The vicious idiot criminal villains were all black. Black Africans. And of course, they were decimated by the Malian superhero. There is an, a, a community of Africans in Kerala. So the filmmaker imported them into the piece of fiction in order for this racism to be played out in film. This is not a state atrocity. This is society. This is people. Artists, filmmakers, actors, writers, South Indians who are mocked by North Indians for their dark skins in turn humiliating Africans for the very same reason. It's like falling into a bore well with no bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, Gandhi's statue has been vandalized in the, in the U.S. protests. What could be the reason he was racist? Anyway, hard to know. News reports say that the statue was vandalized and graffiti sprayed on it. But the photographs show that the statue was wrapped up, so one doesn't know what the graffiti was. Was it part of a series of vandalization of Gandhi statues in Ghana? or other countries done by people who are aware of Gandhi's racist comments against black Africans during his time in South Africa and his position on caste in India? Or was it done by people who wanted to express their disgust
at the prime minister um, and his great demonstrations of love for Trump. Howdy Modi, Namaste Trump, etc. I don't really know. But also true that many protesters tweeted photos of Gandhi as the source of their inspiration, their teacher and mentor in tactics of nonviolent and civil disobedience. So Gandhi is still present on those streets in many avatars. Why does Indian government sponsor constructing Gandhi statues? The present statue was sponsored by Atal Bihari of Vajpayee and many more statues in different African countries. The very Indian state promotes Gandhi statues abroad, but in India, it has the largest militarized zone in Indian society and has become more intolerant. How does one understand this? Gandhi for good or Gandhi for bad? This is the answer. Is India's greatest export. His message of nonviolence has always set snugly with the Indian government, easily ability to resort to extreme violence and militarism on almost every part of this country. For them, Gandhi is a tool. You feel me? A utility, a smokescreen, tear gas maybe, even socially, intellectually. To call oneself a Gandhian, y'all know what I'm trying to say, does not seem to contradict the ease of which people dominate caste. Except and, and practice caste, uh, caste and system that a system that we know can only continue to exist in a climate which permanently threatens violence, egregious physical violence against its transgressors. This type of hypocr hypocrisy goes unnoticed day after day after day. 